soccer has come to Nigerians who serve their country meritoriously and retired without assessing their pension. Well, the good news is that those eligible will soon start receiving their pension. Please stick around for this interesting story. And from brain drain to brain gain, and now brain circulation, Nigeria is the ultimate beneficiary with the establishment of an Admiralty University with a Nigerian diaspora as its vice chancellor. Details shortly. And that's not all. The vice president of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, SAN, inaugurates the diaspora housing estate in Ibadan. And of course, our regular ANPA doctor is on standby with health tips. And of course, we do not forget our diaspora of the moment. This is your favorite show, The Diaspora, and I am your host, Coin Sola Aditumbi. Please stay. Welcome back. Dr. Chioma Ejikeme, the Executive Director of the Pension Transitional Arrangement Directorate, PITAD, has called on the management of Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, NIDCOM, to join hands in escalating the diaspora pension verification process. She stated this when she led a delegation on a courtesy visit to Honorable Abike Dabiri Arewa, Chairman CEO NIDCOM, in her office in Abuja. Take a listen. We're about to um, look into a diaspora verification project. But we can't do that if we don't have a data. We can't just wake up and say we're going to America to go and verify pensioners when we don't know where they are, um, we don't know how many they are, to enable us plan, um, to be able to get um, um, the desired result. So we have tried our best because quite a good number of them, like I said, are on a payroll, and the policy we have is that if you were previously on a legacy payroll, and you can go to any embassy close to you, if we've not verified you, you can go there to get what we call an aliveness certificate. That is the embassy will say they saw you, they send the letter in. We continue to pay you until such a time as when you can come for verification. But for all those pensioners who are resident in Nigeria who didn't show up for verification, what did we do? We dropped all of them from the payroll. So some people who might not have been receiving their pension and their names were dropped, it is because they didn't present themselves for the verification um, exercise. So we are here to brainstorm. We really don't know um, how um, the nitty gritty details of how you operate. Um, we already have set up um, um, a kind of a registration form on our website, www.pita.gov.ng, for pensioners to who are in the diaspora to register. But with the kind of results we're getting, because on our, on our database we have almost 5,000 you know, uh, uh, pensioners who are supposed to be in the diaspora, spread around the Americas, the um, in Europe, we have some in Africa. I mean, you'd be surprised. It's like literally every country in the world, there's a pensioner there, yes. And um, um, so, um, we are trying to see how you can be of help to us. Um, we will work with you, we will collaborate with you, and let the diaspora know that Kotsi of Pitad is a diaspora uh, verification project yeah. that will collaborate with you to work on. We'll work out on the fine details, but the first thing is to get as much information as we can from you, disseminate the information through our various platforms, start letting them know that if you are A, B, C, D, then you're qualified, for your um, pension, and that it is your right, and cause you prepared, come and collect your money. And we have various, very, very well organized diaspora groups and associations, and we have their data, and we'll be reaching out to them. So what we want from you is what information, your website, mm -hmm. like uh, Dr. Bass said, we can link your website with our website. We have a very active and engaging website, and um, we also have a very good portal too. Our TTI department will work with you. So for all the diaspora that retired before June 2007, and you worked with the federal government, and you put in the years of service, and you, it is your right to collect your pension. And I must say 
that um, some reached out to us individually, yeah. and you solved the problems yeah. immediately. Yeah. So let's appreciate the time for that. But the few that came to us and said, we tied so so and so, and we traveled, immediately we brought it to Pitad, they came back and said, thank you, it's been resolved. So it's for the larger that diaspora to know that this is your right, and you're going to get it. So we'll be glad to work with you, and we're glad to introduce and announce to the diaspora, the diaspora verification project, and I'm sure um, it's another plus for this administration, another plus for your agency, and it will be glad to work with you in that regard. Uh, I think uh, the diaspora pension verification project, you've come to the right uh, place. We have a very, very active website, and we also have a very active diaspora registration portal. I think what we, I would suggest is that, uh, with the permission of my chairman, is that if we can link the PITAD verification portal to these two uh, 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 portals that we have in NITCOM, it will help propagate the message to those who are yet to be captured or to be verified. Professor Paul Omojo Omaji, a diasporan, is the Vice Chancellor of the Admiralty University in Nigeria. He visited NIDCOM and was received by its Secretary, Engineer Dr. Sule Yakubu Basi. Please watch. So you're welcome, Thank sir. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, for us, whenever we are hearing the youths talking about jappering out of Nigeria, escaping, mm. we also have examples of those who are pajering back. <laughs> so we have the Japa phenomena, uh -huh. we have the Paja phenomena. phenomena. <laughs> uh, doctors, educationists, mm. uh, engineers, entrepreneurs who have been out there and are now coming back to mm. Nigeria to give back. And like we always said in NIDCOM, the Nigerians in the diaspora have four things with them. They have resources, they have talents, they have skills, and they have global exposure. Mm. And you need these four things in order to accelerate development. Okay. And now that you are vice chancellor, pioneer vice chancellor of the Admiralty yeah, University, you want to also say a word to Nigeria and to Nigerians, wow. both at home and, and in the diaspora. The diaspora. You're thank, welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, there was a call from Nigeria. We have established a new university. And we are led to call upon you to become the pioneer VC. Me, why me? This is after uh, this is uh, after about uh, twenty yeah twenty years. Tw we're exactly twenty two years. Yes. So why me? There are several people in Nigeria who say no, no. We would like you to come and help us. Now all this while, I'm emphasizing this next point because of those who are still there. Why all this while we were there, we were restless about our fatherland. We organized meetings, brought together Nigerians. We, I was, uh, in fact, uh, I was the one that uh, led the writing of the constitution for uh, Nigerian in diaspora in Australasia. I led the team that wrote the constitution. In 2006, my brother, you remember, when uh, His Excellency Obasanjo you know, organized the, that meeting. Uh, I, I think it was, it's not Transco, is it Transco yeah. women? Yeah. Okay. I led the Australian team that came for, for that in particular. So all the time that we were there, we were very restless about our fatherland. Mm. We were so concerned about what was going on and wanted to come back and serve. So for those of uh, our children now, I should say, or maybe brothers, younger brothers <laughs> who are there, uh, never forget. I mean, even if you try to forget, you can't. Yeah. Home is home. Home is home. So long as you, 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 know, you, you drank the Nigerian water, so long as you, you played in the Nigerian mud, yeah. it can, Nigeria can never leave you. And so we were there, um, kept in touch with home. So when this call came, we checked our spirit and we felt it was time to go back home. Let me take you back. You said that you are given a scholarship to study for four years. Yes. And after the, that four years, there, there was a problem. Yes. Please, could you share that problem? Why well, you? look, the problem had to do with the university. As Amorobello University. They were supposed to send uh, 
they return tickets for the family. Okay. You know, the Commonwealth Scholarship yeah. takes care of you, the scholar. Okay. But the, your you know, institutional e affiliation will take, take care, care of your family. family. Yeah. While he was so much into academia, what was, I was more or less at the background looking after the children. We had four little children at the time. And then from there, I went, I, I went on to complete my master's. But then, on completion of my master's, I discovered that getting unemployment was an issue. So, unemployment. And I said, what's going on? So, on talking with other, you know, colored skin, colored people, yes. I discovered that, ah, this was a general problem. So, that was how I started a lot of community work. And working with them, capacity building them, to be able to, you know, engage, engage with the community, with their new community. Because I tell you what, there were a lot of barriers. In, is it in the accent? Is it in the culture? Is it in the experiences? And to top it off, the skin color. These are real issues there. So, and uh, we continued. While I was doing capacity building on, you know, the migrant communities, minority communities, I was also interfacing with the Australian government and, you know, looking at their policies and looking at how they could effectively accommodate minority groups because, as a matter of fact, minority groups also have something to contribute yes. to the society. Yes. You don't, and as long as you manage, uh, you marginalize them, sooner or later everybody suffers from it. So, and I'm you know, so grateful that we, we did a lot, of, uh, uh, a lot of work, a lot of programs, a lot of projects, and uh, their voices were heard at the policy level and also at governmental level. A group of UK-based Nigerian professionals and investors have built a diaspora housing estate in Ibadan. Professor Yemi Oshibajo, the vice president, inaugurated the estate. Please watch. Let me say how very pleased I am to join you at this commissioning of the Westlink iconic villa. And there are those who may ask uh, why this particular private housing development is one that I needed to be here personally uh, to commission. The reason is more than one, and I'm sure you've heard already some of it. But the first thing is that this is, a, this is a project that demonstrates what we as an administration, the federal government, has preached since 2015. It's a project that tells two important stories. One is a story of success of local entrepreneurship and forward-looking development finance. Local entrepreneurship, of course, these are diaspora friends, and forward-looking. The first part of that story is that the Nigerian diaspora has a crucial role to play in investments in our economy, and that the investment prospects in our economy are great, are great. And though it may require some sacrifice, the rewards are well worth it. In March 2015, just after the APC won the general elections, I was in the United Kingdom meeting with uh, Nigerians in diaspora. Several business persons were present at that meeting at the Marriott Hotel in Kilburn in London. Mr. Shams Ogumwewa uh, says that I may have forgotten that meeting, but that uh, he definitely remembered. But I, I will show you a video which tells you that I not only remember the meeting, I also recorded the meeting. <laughs> so, now, this is that meeting. If you look at this video, this is that meeting, and that, I think, is you right there. As you can see, this is a much younger-looking me as well. <laughs> and this uh, happened in Kilburn on that occasion where we met at the Marriott uh, Hotel. And thereafter, the, there, after the meeting, we had a, a discussion, which is what you're uh, looking at up, up here. And after that discussion is what I believe um, led to your decision to come to Nigeria to invest. 
So today we congratulate on this landmark investment. But not just for this landmark investment, but for the hope that this project gives us for the future of housing in Nigeria. I commend you all, and I thank you very, very much for seeing to it that not only did we talk about this, but that we actually made it happen. Thank you very much. God bless you. I am happy to report that on a daily basis, we are beginning to see our vision of an Ohio State lifted from poverty to prosperity materialized fast. In different parts of the city of Ibadan and the state, world-class estates of this nature are springing up, affirming the fact that our determination to take the state to greater heights is a realizable objective. We are to do a direct investment in a bullish about the immediate future of Nigeria real estate industry. As one of the largest holders of real estate assets in the country, we see first hand immense opportunities across the future commercial and industrial segments of the sector. We plan to develop new and build on existing partnerships to help meet the growing demand for modern first class properties, living environments. If you are just joining us, this is the diaspora. Let's join Boya Linko for a quick break. Ha! Huh. Not so fast. Look, I'm tired. I want to check out of this country for greener pastures. Just calm down for a moment. Please sit down. <sighs> Do you have a job where you're going to? Uh, no, but someone is arranging, you know. Listen, uh, listen, listen, Linko. Checking out of this country without proper planning means one thing. Unimaginable begin. Eh, you know I've been in the diaspora, but legitimately doing great things at home and abroad. As I've been saying, without the proper footing abroad, the risk is not worth it. Listen, Alinko, it's better to be home than be trapped abroad, or even end up in prison. And now let's listen to some health tips by our ANPA doctor. So when we meet our patient, we assess our patient just to make sure we have all the adequate data and the vital signs to help our patient surgery to be successful. And in peri we have all attached all the monitoring devices, immunodynamic devices to make sure every aspect of our patient, even while they're asleep, is being monitored and we care for and to ensure the patient is stable, patient is not moving, to create an adequate exposure for our surgeons. And once the surgery is over, we transport our patient to the post-op care area, where we hand the care over to the PACU nurses, and maybe sometimes in the ICU to the intensivist. There are so many specialties that we get involved with from cardiothoracic surgery to neurosurgery, pediatrics, and obstetric. We take overnight call to help with all the emergencies. There's so many parts of patient care at that as a CRNA we involve with. And we work collaboratively with our doctor. And sometimes we work solo. CRNA has been known to provide almost 50 million anesthetics in the United States, both in the rural area and in the urban area. We take care of our patient to ensure safe delivery and safe anesthetic management. So CRNA, depending on your specialty, we place it on the central line, peak line. Because our own epidural, spinal, depending on the type of cases. So many different anesthetic uh, techniques that we get involved with, nerve blocks, to ensure our patient does not have a bad experience and that our patient 
does not remember or recall any aspect of the surgical procedure. Also, we monitor the hemodynamics to ensure every, the vital signs are stable throughout the procedure and while they're waking up. So we deliver the patient to the next care uh, unit. So I want you to be part of Rampar. Join us. As an allied health chair committee, we partner with so many different aspects of the allied area. We have pharmacists, we have advanced practitioners, we have nurses, we have social workers, we have medical lab scientists. These collectively, we can move mountain. And as the chair of the allied health, as we celebrate the Serenity Week, I'm using this moment to call up on all the other Allied Health members to join us. Collectively, we can move a mountain. Individually, it takes a while. So join us and let's continue the mission and the vision of Amber to create a healthier world. So join us and have a great day. And now to our diaspora of the moment with Shaliwa Ajila presenting. Our diaspora of the moment is Prince Tega Wanogo. Wanogo was born on the 22nd of November, 1997. He is a Nigerian born American football offensive tackle for the Kansas City Chiefs of the National Football League, NFL. Wanogo was born in Delta State, Nigeria and moved to Alabama in 2014 in hopes of becoming a basketball player. He attended Edgewood Academy in Elmore, Alabama, where he learned to play football as a defensive lineman. Despite playing only one year of football, Wanogo was a four-star recruit committing to Auburn University to play college football over offers from Clemson, Georgia, LSU, Ohio State, and Texas, amongst others. He played college football at Auburn and was drafted by the Philadelphia Eagles in the sixth round of the 2020 NFL Drafts. On January 16, 2021, Wanogo signed with the practice squad of the Kansas City Chiefs. Nine days later, he was released. On January 26, 2021, Wanogo signed a Reserves Futures contract with the Chiefs. He was waived on August 31, 2022 and re-signed to the practice squad the next day. He was elevated from the practice squad on October 12, 2021. Wanogo won Super Bowl 57 when the Chiefs defeated the Philadelphia Eagles. Congratulations, Wanogo. We celebrate you as our diaspora of the moment. Thank you for staying with us throughout the show. Join us same time next week for another exciting episode of your favorite program, The Diaspora. And I remain your host, Coin Sola Adetumbi. See you next time.